I was sorting through another stack of papers in the cramped, musty office of the government property agency, feeling like I was drowning in legal jargon and endless forms. My dad had left me his shares in a big shot company, and here I was, trying to make sense of what that meant for me, a 27-year-old who'd rather be anywhere but here. The clerk on the other side of the desk was a guy named Alex, a young man with a tired look that seemed to say he'd seen too many people like me. He shuffled through my paperwork, his eyes not quite meeting mine. So, Melissa, you're the lucky one inheriting a fortune, huh? His voice was flat, but I detected a hint of something else. Was it curiosity? Lucky? Feels more like I've inherited a headache. I tried to smile, but it felt forced. I have no clue about half of these documents. Alex looked up, a genuine smile cracking his weary demeanor. Yeah, it's a mess, isn't it? But don't worry, I'll walk you through it. We'll get it sorted. As we went through the documents, his patience was surprising. Most clerks just wanted you out the door, but Alex took his time explaining each form, what it meant, and what I needed to do. It was, refreshing. Thanks, Alex. I didn't expect to find someone who actually cares in a place like this, I said, once we were done. He shrugged, the corners of his mouth, turning up slightly. We're not all robots yet. Besides, it's a nice break from the usual. Helping someone's a good feeling, you know? I laughed, the sound brighter than anything I'd felt since stepping into this bureaucratic maze. I guess I owe you one then. Coffee? My treat, as a thank you, for not letting me drown in paperwork. Coffee sounds great, but it's my treat. You've got enough on your plate with all this inheritance stuff, Alex countered, standing up and gathering the now neatly stacked documents. Walking out of the office felt different. The burden of paperwork was still there, but lighter somehow. Alex led the way to a nearby cafe, a small, cozy place that felt worlds away from the sterile government office. As we sat down with our coffee, the conversation flowed easily. We talked about everything and nothing, work, hobbies, how life can throw curveballs when you least expect it. You know, I never thought I'd meet someone like you in a place like that. Someone, real, I found myself saying. Alex raised an eyebrow, a smirk playing on his lips. Someone real? What, you thought I was a government-issued robot designed to make your life miserable? I chuckled, shaking my head. No, it's just, everyone seems so caught up in their own stuff. It's rare to find someone who listens, who actually sees you, you know? He nodded, taking a sip of his coffee. I get it. Life's too short to be anything but real, especially with people. We're all just trying to figure it out, one day at a time. Our story didn't start with love at first sight or grand gestures. It started with shared smiles, genuine kindness, and a cup of coffee. And sometimes, that's all it takes to turn a regular day into the beginning of the rest of your life. After that day at the cafe, things between me and Alex took off faster than I could have imagined. It wasn't long before we were seeing each other outside of all that legal and paperwork mess. One evening, sitting on my old, comfy couch with takeout boxes scattered around, Alex brought up the idea that would change everything. Hey, I've been thinking. He started, a bit hesitant which wasn't like him at all. He was always so full of confidence, his ideas bold and out there. With your inheritance and my knowledge of the market, we could start something on our own. Something big. I paused, a piece of pizza halfway to my mouth. Start something? Like what, a business? The idea seemed crazy. Sure, I had money now, but business was a whole different game. Yeah, a business hear me out. He leaned forward, his eyes lighting up the way they always did when he was excited about something. We both know the agricultural sector is booming. What if we dive into that? Start a wholesale warehouse for spare parts or something. It's in demand, and with your capital and my connections, we could really make a mark. I set my pizza down, intrigued despite myself. But I don't know the first thing about running a business, Alex. And what about your job? He waved his hand dismissively. My job's a dead end, you know that. 
And you, you're smart, you'll learn. We'll learn together. His confidence was infectious, but I was still hesitant. Alex, it's a huge risk. What if it doesn't work out? I could lose everything. The fear of making a monumental mistake was gnawing at me. But what if it does work out? His hand found mine across the couch, giving it a reassuring squeeze. You won't be alone in this. We're in it together, every step of the way. Plus, your mom's been bugging you about investing that money wisely, right? Here's our chance to do something wise and big. I couldn't help but laugh. You've got an answer for everything, don't you? His enthusiasm was hard to resist. Okay, let's say we do this. We're going to need a solid plan. And I mean solid, Alex. No winging it. Of course. He was practically bouncing with excitement now. I'll draft something up. We'll go over it together, tweak it, make sure it's foolproof. And just like that, our joint venture began. It was a whirlwind of planning, meetings with lawyers, to draw up a partnership agreement, and endless research. My head was spinning most days, but seeing Alex so passionate and dedicated was all the reassurance I needed. Before we got married, Alex insisted we sign a prenuptial agreement. It's just practical, he said one night as we were going over some business plans. In case things go south, we both know where we stand. Everything split in half, clean and simple. I nodded, understanding his point, but wanting to add my own condition. All right, I get it. But I want something in there too. If one of us cheats and that leads to divorce, the cheater loses their share in the business. He looked at me, surprised, but then nodded. Fair enough. I love you, and I'm not going to cheat on you. So, yeah, let's add it. It was a tough conversation, but it felt right. Setting clear rules felt like we were laying a strong foundation, not just for our business, but for our relationship too. The day we signed the lease for our warehouse space was surreal. Standing there, looking at the empty building that would soon be bustling with our business, I felt a mix of terror and exhilaration. We're really doing this, aren't we? I said, more to myself than to Alex. He came up behind me, wrapping his arms around my waist. We're doing this. And it's going to be amazing. You and me, we're going to build something great here. I leaned back into his embrace, allowing myself to believe in the dream we were building. It wasn't just about the business, it was about us, taking on the world together. Little did I know, the challenges ahead would test us in ways I never expected. But in that moment, all I felt was hope and the thrill of starting something new with the man I loved. The buzz of our warehouse was like music to my ears, the shelves stacked with parts, orders coming in and going out. Alex and I, we were riding the high of our success. Our little venture into the world of agricultural spare parts was booming, profits climbing higher than either of us had dared to dream. It was a rush, seeing something we built from the ground up flourish like this. But with growth came growing pains. We need more hands on deck, I said one evening, poring over orders and invoices that seemed to multiply by the hour. I can't keep up with the paperwork on top of everything else. Alex, ever the cautious one, frowned at the suggestion. I don't know, babe. Hiring more people means trusting outsiders with our baby. Can't have just anyone poking around our finances and legal stuff. I got where he was coming from, but something had to give. So, what, you want me to do it all? I'm already swamped as it is. He looked at me, a mix of apology and determination in his eyes. I was thinking, maybe you could take some courses? Get certified in accounting and legal management? It'd keep things tight, just between us. The thought of going back to school on top of running a business felt overwhelming, to say the least. Seriously? When am I supposed to find the time for that? At night? Weekends? He suggested, as if it were that simple. Look, I know it's a lot, but we've got to protect what we've built. You're brilliant, babe. You'll ace it in no time. So, that's what I did. By day, I was the co-owner of a thriving business, and by night, a student once again. 
It was exhausting, juggling books with balance sheets, but I was determined to keep our dream alive. As the business expanded, so did my responsibilities. I became the backbone of our operations paperwork maze, handling everything from document management to accounting and legal issues. Alex took charge of the finances, contract negotiations, and steering the company's growth, which meant he was on the road a lot, leaving me to hold down the fort. One night, with Alex away on a trip and me buried under a mountain of work, I couldn't help but feel the weight of it all. This isn't what I signed up for, I muttered to myself, staring at the computer screen long after the office had gone dark. The phone rang, breaking the silence. It was Alex, checking in from wherever his meetings had taken him. Hey, how's my superstar manager doing? I sighed, rubbing my tired eyes. Drowning in paperwork, if you must know. This is insane, Alex. I can barely keep my head above water. There was a pause on the line. I'm sorry, babe. I wish I could be here to help. But you're killing it, you know that? I couldn't do this without you. His words were meant to comfort, but they felt like a reminder of the chasm between us, growing wider with every business trip he took. I just, I miss you, Alex. And I miss us not being so consumed by all of this. I know, I miss you too. But think about where this is going to take us. We're building our future, one invoice at a time, he tried to joke. I forced a laugh, but it sounded hollow even to my own ears. Yeah, one invoice at a time. Just make sure you come back to me in one piece, okay? I promise. And hey, when I get back, let's take a day off. Just you and me, no business talk. Deal? Deal. I agreed, clinging to that small promise of normalcy in the midst of our success-driven chaos. Hanging up, I turned back to my work, the screen blurring slightly as I blinked back tears. This was the dream, wasn't it? So why did it feel like something was slipping through my fingers? Life in the fast lane of our booming business took its toll on me in more ways than one. The late nights, the constant stress, and the never-ending pile of work left little time for anything else, especially taking care of myself. I didn't even notice the changes at first, but as the months rolled by, the mirror reflected a version of me I hardly recognized. I was heavier, more worn out and the sparkle that once lit up my eyes seemed to have dimmed. It wasn't just my reflection that had changed, Alex's behavior towards me had shifted too. He started working longer hours, making excuses to stay at the office or go on trips without me. Just tying up some loose ends, he'd say, or, this trip is really important for the business. I tried to brush off the nagging feeling that something was off, telling myself it was all in my head. Then came the party with his business partners. I was actually looking forward to it, a chance to step away from the work and maybe even reconnect with Alex amidst our hectic schedules. But when I mentioned it, his reaction caught me off guard. Look, I don't think it's a good idea for you to come, he said, not meeting my eye. I was stunned. What? Why not? I thought we were both invited. He sighed, a look of discomfort crossing his face. It's just, the wives of the partners, they're all, you know, very polished. And you've, changed. I don't want you to feel out of place. It might be better if I go alone. His words hit me like a slap in the face. Changed? Out of place? Since when did appearances matter more to him than us being together? So, what, you're ashamed of me now? The hurt was evident in my voice, mixing with a rising anger. It's not like that, he said quickly, but the damage was done. I'm just thinking about what's best for the business, that's all. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. This wasn't the Alex I fell in love with, the one who used to tell me I was beautiful no matter what. Now, here he was, embarrassed by me, by the very real signs of the life and work we had shared. If that's how you see me, then go. Enjoy your party, I spat out, the words tasting bitter. He tried to say something else, probably to backtrack or smooth things over, but I was done listening. I turned away, feeling a mix of heartbreak and disgust. 
That night, as he went off to mingle and laugh with our polished associates, I stayed home, crying over the unspoken cracks in our marriage that had finally, painfully, come to light. The tension in our house grew thicker with each passing day, turning from a place of love and shared dreams into a battlefield. The party incident had left a gaping wound in our relationship, and things only went downhill from there. Alex, the man who once looked at me like I was the only woman in the world, started finding fault in everything I did, especially about my looks. One evening, as I was trying to unwind after another grueling day at work, he walked in, his face set in that now familiar look of disapproval. Here, he said, tossing a brochure onto the coffee table. It was a membership for a local fitness club. Thought you could use this. Might help with, you know, he gestured vaguely at me. I stared at the brochure, then up at him, feeling a mix of anger and hurt. What's that supposed to mean? I asked, though I already knew the answer. It means maybe it's time to do something about how you look. You're not exactly the woman I married anymore. He shot back, his words like daggers. I tried to shrug off his cruel comment, to show him that his words didn't hurt me, but they did. Deeply. Alex, you know how swamped I am with work. When am I supposed to find the time to go to a gym? That's just an excuse, he retorted, his patience thinning. If you cared enough, you'd make the time. But no, you'd rather just sit around and... And what? Do the job that keeps our business running? The job you're too busy to help with, because you're always out networking? I couldn't keep the bitterness from my voice. He scoffed, turning away. You know, I'm getting tired of your attitude. It's not just about the work. You've let yourself go, and it's embarrassing. I was speechless, the hurt turning into a deep-seated anger. How could he say such things? How could the man I loved, the man I built a life with, be so callous? But it didn't stop there. His comments became more frequent, more hurtful. He called me lazy, fat, a shadow of the woman he'd married. Each word chipped away at my self-esteem, at my very sense of self. I began to avoid mirrors, to shy away from his touch, feeling unworthy and unlovable. And then, there were the nights he didn't come home. The first time it happened, I was worried sick. By the third time, I was numb. When I dared to ask where he'd been, he'd snap. It's none of your business. Just focus on what you're supposed to do. In the depth of my turmoil, I reached a point where the weight of silence became unbearable. My voice, shaky but determined, finally broke the silence one evening. I can't live like this anymore, I admitted to Alex, my heart pounding against my chest. We need to talk about divorce, about how we're going to handle the business. The idea of splitting everything we built together was daunting, but necessary for my peace. Alex's reaction was a mix of rage and disbelief. You want to walk away now, he thundered. After all I've put into this? You think you're entitled to half? His words, sharp and cutting, were meant to intimidate, to make me second-guess my worth. I built this company. You're nothing without me, he sneered, his words echoing off the walls, a painful reminder of how far we drifted apart. His threats of dragging me through a legal nightmare didn't deter me as he thought they would. Instead, they crystallized my resolve. It's not just about the business, Alex. I countered, my voice steadier than I felt. It's about respect, something that's been missing for far too long. Later, washing my face with cold water of the bathroom, I stumbled upon Alex's phone, abandoned and buzzing with a new message. Driven by a sudden impulse, I picked it up, and what I found shattered the remnants of my denial. Messages from another woman, filled with intimacy and vulgarity, painted a vivid picture of betrayal. My heart sank as I scrolled through plans for a getaway, a trip meant for two, all behind my back. With every message I read, a part of the old me died, and a new resolve took its place. I didn't confront Alex with my discovery. Instead, I carefully documented everything, a silent promise to myself to fight for what was rightfully mine. This wasn't just about getting even, it was about claiming my dignity, my independence. With a heart heavy yet resolute, I knew what I had to do. 
The discovery of Alex's betrayal wasn't just a personal blow, it was a wake-up call to protect what I had worked so tirelessly for. So, I went to our office, a place that once symbolized our shared dreams, now a battlefield where I had to secure my future. First, I meticulously reviewed every document, every account associated with our business. It was crucial to understand the full scope of what we had built together, and what was at stake. Discovering the extent of Alex's deceit, including the car he bought for his mistress, only fueled my determination. I gathered every piece of evidence, made copies, and prepared myself for the next step. Armed with the documents, I sought out the best lawyer I could find, someone known for their integrity and tenacity. I need to file for divorce, I told the lawyer, my voice steady, but my hands betraying my nervousness. And I intend to fight for what's rightfully mine in the business we built together. The lawyer, a seasoned professional with a keen sense of justice, listened intently as I laid out my case. After reviewing the prenuptial agreement and the evidence of infidelity, he looked at me with a reassuring calmness. Given the circumstances and the evidence you've provided, you have a strong case. We'll do everything in our power to ensure you come out of this with what you deserve. The legal battle that ensued wasn't easy. It was a test of my resilience, my patience, and my very spirit. But throughout it all, I held on to the belief that truth and justice would prevail. And prevail they did. The court recognized the validity of our prenuptial agreement and the evidence of Alex's betrayal. In the end, the judgment was passed in my favor. I retained full ownership of the business we had built together, along with a fair portion of our shared assets. Additionally, I was granted financial compensation for the emotional distress caused by Alex's actions. It was a bittersweet victory. The business that had once been a symbol of our union and collective effort was now solely mine. The relief of securing my financial and professional future was tempered by the sadness of how our relationship had unraveled. Yet, as I stood outside the courthouse, the final decree in hand, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. The fight was over. I had stood up for myself, fought for what was right, and emerged victorious. It wasn't just about the business or the assets, it was about reclaiming my dignity and self-worth. A month had flown by since the court's decision. I was in the middle of reviewing some new contracts when my phone rang. The caller ID flashed Alex's name, a name I hadn't seen or thought about in weeks. Hesitating for just a moment, curiosity got the better of me, and I answered. Hey, Melissa, it's me. Alex's voice came through, laced with a kind of forced cheerfulness. I've been thinking about us, about everything that happened. I'm really sorry, you know? I messed up big time. I messed up big time. I couldn't help but let out a short, incredulous laugh. You're sorry? Now? After everything? Yeah, I know it's late, but, listen, I'm in a bit of a tough spot right now. He continued, his voice taking on a desperate edge. The thing with, you know, it didn't work out. And I'm struggling to find a job. I was hoping, maybe you could help me out? Give me a job at the company? His audacity left me speechless for a moment. The man who had betrayed me, who had threatened to take everything from me, was now asking for a favor. It was almost laughable. Alex, let me get this straight. I said, my voice calm, but firm. You cheat, you lie, you try to drag me through the mud, and now you want me to give you a job? You've got some nerve. I know, I know, it sounds bad, but I'm really in a bind here. He pleaded. I'll take anything, really. I just need a chance to get back on my feet. I took a deep breath, feeling a sense of clarity and resolve wash over me. Alex, the answer is no. I've moved on. The company is doing great, better than ever, actually. And that's without you. I suggest you do the same, move on. There was silence on the other end of the line for a few moments. So, that's it, then? You're just going to leave me hanging? Goodbye, Alex. I ended the call and, without a second thought, blocked his number. It was a symbolic gesture, but an important one. I was closing that chapter of my life for good. In the weeks and months that followed, I poured my energy into the company. 
sales were up, we were breaking into new markets, and I had signed several lucrative contracts with new partners. The business was thriving, and so was I. Looking back, I realized that Alex's betrayal, while devastating, had been a catalyst for change. It forced me to reevaluate my life, my values, and my ambitions. I emerged from that tumultuous period not as a victim, but as a victor, fully in control of my destiny.